nasty and <laughs> upset and unhappy, but rather the the we, we believe that the transformation of the world is living through Torah. It's the vehicle, so to speak. But for that to happen, the law must be just. It must be fair. It must be correct. And God agrees with these women, which is pretty, you know, if you're kind of looking for vindication, I suppose, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the section of the vows, and again, when we talk about it in relation to this concept that Masse is about our own lives, mm -hmm. means that with our words we can create living Torah, even in our daily interaction and transaction. Which I think is a really moving and beautiful idea. Mm -hmm. If you're so enamored with these Hasidic commentaries, how come you don't have payas and a strimal and the whole get-up? Well, some would say that makes me a true Hasid. Why? Well, you know, look, uh, keep in mind that a lot of that stuff is a is an evolution that happens later. So the texts at the time, um, they were not concerned with such... There's no... The texts don't say stress like that. <laughs> right. Much of that was... Um, and not everybody did, even when it happened. Right. Uh, the, when it was going on. Right. It was... A lot of that that you see now is a... Um, in times of trauma, there's very frequently a conservative reaction where you try to hold on to everything. You see this with uh, Spanish Jewry after 1492, where they held on very tightly to medieval Spanish as something that was, you know, so because as a reaction to the trauma of 1492. Right, right. And, you know, obviously what was a probably the most creative and open-minded way of, uh, of thinking in, in uh, Jewish thought became very reactionary culturally uh, as a result of the Holocaust after the Shoah. So, you know, I think one should not confuse current sociological phenomenon with textual... But, but don't these texts help create a certain type of community? Yes. So what kind of well, community is these... that That's the same one. It's not, the, not necessarily the same community. Um, you know, the the texts that I mentioned, for example, they didn't have, none of these left dynastic mm -hmm. um, chasidots, if you will. Um, again, that was an evolution of other groups. So, you know. So how do these texts influence Jews today? I don't know, ask anybody who actually listens to these. <laughs> um, I think uh, they're a very, uh, they're very, look, to some degree, the Lithuanian world never really produced significant, meaningful um, parshanut of this sort on the Torah, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. So, almost everything, even, even if you read the art scrolls and all that, are very heavily based on this material. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that is what we have. I think that is what we, what we consider Torah commentary. Why didn't the Lithuanian world produce anything like this? They had, uh, they had different... They produced a lot of other things that they yeah. didn't do. So there's a great deal of halachic literature that was produced on the Lithuanian side uh, that's not matched by the, on, the, um, on the Hasidic side. And you have some people who cross over. So Rav Tzadok, for example, was a a Lithuanian Ilui. He was a Gaon, he was a genius, and he wrote halachic works, and that's what, and then wrote these works, including dreams, he, he wrote down his dreams, all kinds of really creative stuff that happened after he transformed to, to Hasidut. When did you get into this stuff? I grew up with it. So since you were a child? I mean, it was never, it wasn't uh, a discovery uh, mm -hmm. in my life, because this was what I was exposed to from childhood. So, did you fall in love with it as a child? But I, I came back to it, I suppose. Yeah. Well, again, it was just, that's what it was. I mean, you know, Rav Tzolo, the Kedushat Levi, these are, this is what you lived. I mean, um, that's what you read. But um, it sort of dawned on me after my YU days. I, I went to Yeshiva University. Yeah. 
uh, and studied philosophy and all that, it sort of came back. I sort of reread it in a whole other way at that point. It, what I actually was reading made a different sense to me. Mm -hmm. And how about you? You you read Those are the steps along the way, right? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, like the 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 it's not just one step. You know, you're, yeah. it's an evolution. It's an evolution of. Uh, were there any punk rockers who who you think were most consonant with with some of the? Well, that's a, an unfair question since you know my background. But uh, yeah, I was very sympathetic to that. I think uh, that was. Uh, how would you? Yeah. How would you explain? Uh, like the punk rock thing and the, the punk rock thing and the the nineteenth century Hasidic commentary thing. I mean, you love both. You love uh, both. Yeah, I still got my Doc Martens on. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the I think the 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 element that runs through both mm -hmm. is um, the reality of the the recognition of the reality of human suffering. So whereas Litvax, you know, you mentioned some people before. You read their columns, you know, you read these, it's always that uh, kind of, oh, you know, if you're feeling bad, think about if, you know, think about the guy who doesn't have hands, or whatever right. that particularly offensive uh, line in a very popular book. Uh, you know, just, it's always kind of, uh, you know, if you have real emuna, you know, you won't suffer, etc. You know, this kind of stuff. That's very cerebral. Very easy. To, well, I don't know if it's cerebral. It's it's not true. I think it's like, um, it's not cerebral because I think that the truer element is recognizing human, uh, the complexity of human mm -hmm. existence. If you if you if you have a black and white monochromatic view of human life then it's very easy to say, just get up and wash Nagelwasser and Davin and do that, and everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. And then everything's not fine. Mm -hmm. Well, that's your fault. Mm -hmm. right? You didn't do it well enough, or, yeah. or don't bother me, or, uh, you know, I got my own trouble. Or, <laughs> you know, it's not a... It's, that stuff is easy to say, but it's very difficult to, to derive meaning from. But um, I think, you know, going back from the beginning, from the Baal Shem Tov through Rav Nachman, it's a recognition that, you know that line that people misunderstand in Rav Nachman, of, um, it's a mitzvah to be happy. Yeah. It doesn't mean to be an idiot. <laughs> That's not what, if you read right. the actual passage, and if, if I knew we were going into that, I would have uh, brought it. But the, the line is, because the alternative is so powerful. Now it's, um, if you do not maintain... Happiness, which he believe, which he corresponded with faith. Mm -hmm. Faith meaning that there's a meaning to what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Again, coming back to the Masod. There's a meaning to what you're going through. So you have to go through it. You're each, you know, in the Hasidic thought, there's a very strong um, argument that every person's biography is, is critical. There is a interpretation of the Torah that would not be understood without your life. Like, your life will at some point be will be the understanding of some passage or some word or some concept. Everybody's individual, the reality of their real existence matters. And, um, but the challenge is to, to hold on even during the times of suffering. And to go through, to, to be able to, you know, the, the famous line, all Rav Nachman is full of these lines, right? That, um, this, um, or is it, uh, or is it attributed to the Kutzker, the, the line that, like, uh, there's nothing more whole than a broken heart. Mm. Um, you know, it's over and over and over again, these ideas. So the idea is that uh, joy is, um, is a re response to the reality of, you, of the suffering. And it is meant to be a transformation of the suffering, like we've talked before. This... Um, this uh, transformation of all the negative things that someone has gone through into something holy and something great and something beautiful. Which is, in a sense, I mean, it's what we recognize about art. Why do we care about literature and poetry and uh, music and all of these things? Is because they illuminate something about our existence. They give us meaning. Meaning mm -hmm. is very critical. Meaning is, again, why is the word so important? Because it gives us meaning. And but what about punk rock music? I, I never could understand it. It always seems so violent and hateful. I 